On September 15th of 2012, the Mount Sopras Historical Society invited Carbondale elders to the Thompson House Museum in Carbondale to share their stories of growing up in the valley in the 20s and 30s. One of the guests that day was Margaret McCann. Here Margaret recalls how the depression of the 1920s and 30s hit her family. My mother was a great, great cook. She was from Vienna, Austria, and my father was from Regensburg, Germany. We farmed on the Seavers Ranch, which is across the river from what is Aspen Glen now, and uh, wheat, potatoes, oats. That's what my dad raised, and cows and pigs. And then, of course, the Depression came along and wiped us out. We were just little kids. But uh, they took it. The bank took everything. We, we just had the clothes on our back. We were poor. We were mighty poor. We're still poor. I started out with nothing, and I've got most of it left. <laughs> so we had to move to town on 2nd and Garfield. That little house is now torn down, but uh, that's where we lived. And, of course, money was short. We didn't have any. But my dad went to work for the railroad. And then my mom, being such a great cook, she worked out for people. And she worked for Hattie Holland. Uh, we, uh, kids were, my sister and I were in school, of course, right over where the old school building is now. I think it's a computer for kids or something. Mm. And, uh, when school was out, we'd walk up the lane and to take mama home. But Mrs. Holland, we were skeptical of ever coming in the house. We waited outside and. And she kind of mellowed down, I guess, what you would say. And we got to come into the parlor and look around. Oh, we had never seen such things. And the first thing that we noticed was the Taj Mahal. We were just fascinated. And, oh, the memory never did leave us. But we sat, legs crossed and hands in our laps and just listen to her tell the story of the travels that she was on. And Mom stayed with her. And then one day after school, we came to walk Mama home. And we knocked at the back door. And Mrs. Holland was in a wheelchair at the time. She finally came to the door and we said where's mama and she didn't answer us and my sister said we came to walk mama home we thought maybe mrs holland didn't hear us and so mrs holland says well i locked her in the cellar she wanted to bring me up strawberries and i don't want strawberries so Locked her in the cellar. Yeah, in the cellar right out here on the porch. So here was Mama knocking on the trap door, I guess is what you what we would call it. And so she rolled her wheelchair off and Mama got out and Mama said, well, goodbye. So we that left. Was, that was that. That was the, that. The last day. <laughs> oh. So from there, why my mom... Worked for, uh, oh, she, she always worked out. Worked out on the Crystal Springs Ranch when the Clausens owned it, and we were related to the Clausens from my dad's side. In the old country, you know, everybody was related to somebody that had cousins that came over and wanted other cousins to come. My dad was only 12 when he came. And my mom was 16. Where'd they come from? 
My dad came from Regensburg, Germany, and my mom came from Vienna, Austria. Her real dad was already here in Glenwood. Uh, 914 Pitkin, and the house still stands. And my grandfather was the president of uh, the uh, bank in Glenwood, Citizens Bank, I think it was. But uh, as time went on, as I say, uh, Mom worked out. My dad kept up with the railroad. And... uh, Oh, Mom, just, she had such a great, great sense of humor and such a vibrant personality. My dad was more or less on the quiet side. But, of course, Mom did all the talking, too, so. What's, tell me a story on your mom. That How was she so energetic? and? Well, she belonged to everything uh, or was a mixer a go-getter for any organization or any doings that went on in Carmondale. And when Potato Day came, why, it was a week's preparation to get the best jar of canned beans, peas, or make the angel food cakes. And uh, in her passing in the house that I am in now, she had a basket, a basket that she had brought from Vienna with her belongings. And in it was nothing but red and blue ribbons that she won for potato days for the handiwork, the crochet work. And of course, in Austria, when they were little, you know, they, the girls, that's what they taught them. The ABCs, well, but the handiwork, beautiful handiwork. So your potato day memories, what was your favorite memory of that day when you were growing up? Oh, the day we got to go, we stayed in the summers. We were just ranch kids, loved it. It's the best life in the world. But in the summertime, we got to spend with uh, Etta and Bill Jessup that ranched up on the walled place across from where Crystal Springs is now. And uh, that one particular potato day that stands out is when Etta had us girls, Annie and I, go to the beauty shop to have our permanent. And she bought us some fancy sweaters for that day. But the permanence in those days was the machine that had all these little, like, alligator clips that you sat uh-huh, under. Right. Oh, <laughs> like torture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was, but we sure had, we sure were pretty girls that potato day. <laughs> That's about what I can remember, and we picked potatoes. What's a special memory of that potato picking? Oh, the potato t- picking was, I was always, I was a little squat, but they always matched me with Bob Gardner, big fella, and he had hands like a bear. But that was all right with me because he could take two handfuls and we'd have a basket full and a nickel, a sack we got. It took four baskets to make a sack. Boy, we we could go down that road just 50 miles an hour because here he was with his big hands and I didn't mind that one bit because we ended up with more nickel, more nickels than the rest of the kids, but. We had fun. So it was a fun time. What 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 made it fun? I mean, of course, you're you're out of school. Oh, that and we you're... that we had our own money to go buy something special for Christmas for mom and dad, or that we something spe- We always had handmade clothes, which was fine out of flower sacks that came printed material and so forth, and. Uh, or out of grandpa's pants, you know, or skirt. We didn't care. It was, that's the way it was. We were poor. But uh, the fun thing, as I say, was we had our own money. As I said, we were poor, st- still poor. You know? But we had our own money to buy something special for the 
for mom and dad, you know, after we lost everything. Couldn't, couldn't even take a bed. It was... Uh, so what was a special thing that you remember buying for your folks? A picture that I still have of a scene that uh, reminded mom and dad of the Swiss Alps and old country life, the little thatched, I think it's a thatched house, if I remember, it's down in the basement. But when we gave that to mom and dad at Christmas, you should have seen the tears. Oh, my goodness. They just, because my mom never went back, and neither did my dad. What's your favorite memory of your mother? Oh, the ways that she, uh, she was never sad. The way, or difficult times, she, she made the most of everything, just whether it was by words or doing something for you. She was, she was always there. She was always there. Hmm. And to this day, I say a lot of times, oh, I wish Mom was here. She'd, she'd know what to do. Exactly. <laughs> and my dad, I was always, I should have been the boy. I never had hair until I was three. And my dad and uh, the hired hands always came home for dinner at the ranch and my sister and I always took the old horse to go up and meet him out of the field. But there was a gate, okay? So it was always up to me to open the gate. Well, this one particular day, why, I always had to ride in the back. She got to sit in the saddle. She had the long curls, and I didn't have no hair, you know. So the horse just reared up, and away they went. Well, there was a big bull snake by the gate. So, of course, I ran, too. I ran for home. And uh, my sister was already home, but I sat down because it's, I was so scared. Well, the red ants, I sat in a red ant pile, and Dad had a, a hired man, Frank Sweet, and uh, I was crying and bellowing. And of course, they were on their way down to go home for dinner. And Frank saw me sitting in the pile and crying. So he came, he stripped me, and he said, By gosh, Bobby, you're a girl. He never knew I was, I never had any hair. We always wore little coveralls, you know, on the ranch kids, you know. Right? That was Margaret McCann remembering life in the 30s in Carbondale, Colorado. 